Long days and pleasant nights, fellow travelers along the path of the beam. I am known in this realm as Jaime in Fuego, and if it please ya, hold palaver with me here for part 4.5 of the Road to the Dark Tower movie. Yes, that's right, this is a segment inspired by Mr. Bev Vincent, who wrote an amazing book I urge all of you to check out called The Road to the Dark Tower, which explains all of just uh, King's inspiration. Hail to Stephen King, can't forget that, because this is a special presentation of Hail to Stephen King. And weird that it's 4.5, right? Yeah, so it's in between the fourth book, which is my favorite, Wizard in Glass, and between the fifth book, which is the one that I'm currently rereading as we march towards the now August 4th date of the Nicolaj Arcel, who is directing the film that's starring Matthew McConaughey as the Man in Black and Idris Elba as Roland Deschain the Gunslinger. And yet, even though King wrote this long after the original seven books, he specifically placed it in between four and five. And that's what is so fascinating about it because it really, in a lot of ways, is an epilogue of sorts to my favorite book in the entire series, and that is The Wind Through the Keyhole, which you see right up there, and you see a caged tiger. There's all kinds of craziness in this book because it's, you know how Roland loves telling stories, as I've said many times? Well, this is basically a story in a story in a story, if you can believe that, and yet, Everything ties together so incredibly cohesively. There's themes that transcend all three of the stories and work so very well. It's awesome because we immediately pick up right where the fourth book left off, which I know, you know, Wolves of the Kala did, but this basically picks up just in between. And that's because we don't really see that much from our main quartet, you know, which is Jake and Oi and Susanna and Eddie and Roland. They are essentially right after they have, you know, got their Keebler cookies and their sandwiches and all that stuff. And you know, the note from Mr. RF, yeah, Randall Flagg, we all know who that is. They are just walking back down the path after leaving the, the Green Palace or, you know, castle, whatever the hell, where they had the encounter with TikTok man and whatnot. And I'm doing this before Wolves of the Kala because this entire entry is completely encompassed before anything that happens once you join the Kotet at, um, well, after the prologue in Wolves of the Kala at least. And so, yeah, they're walking back down the path and they start to notice that the weather is getting a little hot, oddly, and Oi is acting just a little strange. And suddenly they get to a river and they meet this guy named Bix and he's super old but super friendly and he leads them across the river, feeds them some fish, I mean, he's super nice, but he confirms the suspicions that, yeah, a Stark Blast is coming. And what the hell is a Stark Blast? Well, a Stark Blast is always kind of preempted by a rise in the temperature before a drastic cold windstorm comes and basically destroys everything in its path. And Roland, when he first just gets this confirmation, he's like, oh, I knew it, I knew it. And, you know, Bix is like, you're from Gilead and you didn't know this right off the bat? The hell is wrong with you, man? And so that when he finally seeks shelter with the rest of the Kotet at this place that Bix, uh, you know, leads them to, the fisherman dude, he starts to tell them a story. And that's where we jump into the postscript stuff from the kid's journey in Magus, you know, when it was, you know, Cuthbert and Elaine and Roland and, you know, killing the big coffin hunters and all that stuff. And yet we don't see Elaine or Bert, which is funny because when King initially announced this book in 2009, he said, I have two new ideas for two sequels. I know that I wasn't gonna write any more Dark Tower books, but I got an idea and I like it enough that my next book is either gonna be that or it's gonna be a sequel to The Shining. He had fans vote, and even though uh, Dr. Sleep ended up winning out, he ended up writing uh, The Wind Through the Keyhole first, and probably because it was a much shorter read compared to Dr. Sleep, but they are both of immensely awesome quality. But uh, even though it was originally supposed to be Bert when he announced this in 2009 on the journey before the book came out, you know, years later, uh, it ends up being Jamie Dick Curry, who was like well, the first person, if I remember correctly, in the original Gunslinger book to learn that, you know, uh, Roland was gonna challenge court and he was gonna try to win his guns and everything. So even though we really got very little in The Gunslinger with Jamie, we get a full little mini adventure with him and Roland where it's after 
He's unfortunately killed his mother, you know, on the whole Rhea of the Coups, uh, you know, glamour that, you know, he mistook her for the witch and, you know, offed her, and yet she was hiding behind the curtain to give him a present, and it was so, it was so sad, and yet it was very obviously heavy on Roland's heart at the very, very end of Wizard in Glass. He's weeping, and Susanna's trying to comfort him about it and everything, and it's still heavy on his heart as he goes to Debaria, which ironically, the place where his father Stephen is sending him and Jane is where his mother was, you know, in kind of this sabbatical of hiding after she probably got the idea that Stephen knew about the affair with Martin and there were people talking and so she left and she was there almost in this commune of sorts called Serenity with all these women and she was praying for Roland's safe return, you know, from, from Magus and Hambry and such and yet she was also trying to just, you know, I'm, I'm assuming figure out an apology or a way of paying penten, penance, uh, if I should say it correctly, for what people were kind of getting the vibe she had done with the evil wizard at this point. And so, yeah, it's fascinating to get a little bit more of that history of the time that his mother spent there from these women, but why are Jamie and, uh, you know, Rowan being sent there? Because of the fact that there is something called a skin man, which is a shapeshifter there, and this is really the stuff with this creature is possibly some of the most horrific stuff, I mean, in the entire series, all of the Dark Tower. I mean, obviously the vampire stuff with Callahan is pretty horror-centric, and um, you know, a, a few other things here and there. That's the first that comes to mind since I'm reading Wolves of the Collar right now for later in this month of May, but yeah, it's, it, it's gruesome. The stuff that King describes about this creature that shifts from a man to a bear, a lion, a crocodile, a uh, goodness, it's a, it's a tiger, it's a, you know, it's all these different things and it's tearing people's faces off, it's, you know, ripping limbs, it's doing all these horrible things and so after their train derails and they end up having to ride horses the rest of the way, they meet the sheriff who is like old homies with, uh, you know, Roland's father and there's, you know, a cool connection that you have to read the book to find out why. But, yeah, they uh, spend their first night there after, you know, just getting the, the lowdown about, you know, more of what's going on. Even though Vinay and Steven had basically told Roland, yeah, it's a, it's a shapeshifter, you know, or it's a werewolf type thing, but we think it could be many creatures. Anyway, after the first night that they stay there, there is possibly the most gruesome attack yet. A whole barn full of people are killed, and the only survivor is this young boy named Bill. He's obviously horrendously traumatized. He lost his father in the ordeal, and yet they know that this kid is their ticket to finding out possibly who this dude is that is changing and killing everybody. And yet in an effort to comfort Bill, what does Roland do? What is Roland great at doing? Telling stories. And this story is from the Magic Book of the Eld, and it was probably his favorite story as a kid, and his mother used to read it to him and stuff. You're seeing the motherly connection more so there. And he utters a phrase to build, you know, the stories we hear in our childhood we remember for the rest of our lives, which I consider immensely true. I mean, on point stuff right there. And the tale is called the Wind Through the Keyhole, yes, where we actually get the title of this book. And this tale, within a tale, within a tale, actually encompasses the most of the entire book. And for me, it's my favorite part of the entire book because it made me feel like a kid again. Because you are years, years, like, you know, generations and generations before. You're not in Gilead, but you're, you know, presumably kind of in, you know, mid-world, in, uh, you know, a place where there is an evil woods nearby that is filled with all kinds of crazy creatures, you know. It's almost uh, more similar in a lot of ways to uh, Eyes of the Dragon, which I mentioned I wanted a sequel so badly to. Well, this feels like it dwells within the same world. I mean, for God's sake, there's mentions of Garland in here, and uh, there's mentions of dragons, and a dragon, in fact, is what but the young protagonist named Tim is, uh, is its what allegedly killed his father, Big Ross. And so what ends up happening is that the tax man is coming, who's known as the Covenant Man, and we'll get to him yeah, very, very soon. But his mom, to actually pay stuff, marries the, the, this guy who is his father's partner, and he's a drinker, and he's abusive, and, you know, she's just putting up with it. And Tim, when the Covenant Man finally comes around, has just a little discourse with him, and dude is like, come talk with me in the woods, and, you know, I'll, I'll let you know what really happened to your father. And then he ends up going out on an adventure through these woods, and I, there's so much that I want to talk about, but I don't want to spoil this tale, because like I said, it made me feel like a child, you know? I was right there with Tim as he goes into these crazy dangerous woods where he encounters 
dragons and swamp people and evil fairies and all kinds of stuff and he really just kind of becomes a man and his bravery just gets cranked up to 11 and he ends up uh, you know having to just face a big Stark Blast just like in uh, you know the main main tale. So the Stark Blast kind of is a thread that goes through you know or at least in mention through all of the stories here which is really fascinating and so I adore the story within the story within the story that is the wind through the keyhole and that's not to say that I don't like the skin man stuff because it is brutal and it is cool and I just love all of the stuff where Roland is a, a kid it's some of my favorite bits of the entire series which is why I'm so glad that recently Ron Howard said that there is still plans depending upon the success of this August film provided it doesn't get delayed again and we haven't seen a trailer yet so I still who knows maybe by the time this goes up uh, you know for Hail to Stephen King you uh, will have a trailer and this will be slightly out of date but at least for now I haven't seen it yet as of this filming but apparently the success of the TV series which is gonna follow Roland's Young Adventures that is still in development hinges upon that so the the skin man stuff um, I'm not gonna say how it resolves but you know if Roland grows up to be a man you know he's at least gonna gonna get through it, but the thing that I really, I mean, just adore so much about this book as well is the fact that it's really a rumination about Roland and his love for his mother and all of that regret which he had and just kind of coming to terms with it is what the really full nature and uh, main emphasis of this story is, is about, you know, a boy and his love for his mother. And that's in all of the stories, even the wind through the keyhole, you know, the, the one that doesn't have any real Dark Tower characters in it, except for uh, one that the Covenant Man is hinted at being, I mean, big time hinted at. I'm not gonna say who, but it, it just tickled my fancy so immensely. And um, yeah, just the note that Roland gets from uh, the, the women in Serenity, which, uh, well, it's, it's a note from his mother, and that's not really spoiling too much. It's, uh, it's heartwarming, it's heart-wrenching, and yet it really gives closure in, you know, both the tale, uh, you know, when we join the regular Cotet and the younger Roland stuff, it gives so much closure to the way that Wizard and Glass ended, you know, just some of the little threads with Roland and his mother. God, I love this book and uh, I cannot recommend it enough. It might be my number three after Wizard and Glass and The Wasteland because those three books are all adjoined and, you know, beside one another and it's my favorite period of you know, the entire story. And that's because in the right hands, any object can be magic, and Stephen King, once again, even after closing the book, haha, <laughs> so to speak, but on, psh, on the Dark Tower series, he had another story to tell, which maybe, maybe, maybe gives me hope that some of those tales that he said, you know, it's for, it's for another time or whatever, maybe, maybe there are still a few loose hinges here and there that he could possibly come back to, and then we can hear Once Upon a Buy, again and it would just warm my heart so much just like the wind through the keyhole did i don't know if i recommend reading it in between four and five or if i recommend reading it after because i read it after because i've been doing this whole cycle of starting at the beginning and working through everything so i read the wind through the keyhole after i'd already read all seven books now there is an argument amongst fans and anytime that the question's even been posed on hail to stephen king should i read wind through the keyhole after Wizard and Glass, or should I read it after, uh, you know, finishing the original seven books? And I'm still kind of undecided about it because there's a few references, like little Easter eggs specifically put in there, including one character specifically that's in Wolves of the Kala, and, uh, you know, also the place where Wolves of the, you know, Call it takes place. That, uh, you know, they're, they're just little nods for people who have already gone all the way through, but the context being so fresh from 4 to go right into 4.5, man, it ties, ties so well. It's really a tough one, so I I can't give you an answer there. It, it could really go either way. So I say that one is at your own discretion. But on that note, our journey comes to an end, at least for now, my friends and fellow constant readers. I have been Jaime in Fuego. You can find me on all social media sectors, just at Jaime in Fuego. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. The Hail to Stephen King is a show that I do weekly, and it's going to be covering a lot of Dark Tower stuff here in the month of May because of the fact that on May 
28th at the Phoenix Comic Con, I am heading up a panel called The Road to the Dark Tower Movie. So it only makes sense that there's going to be a lot of coverage. There's going to be the new Wolves of the Kala review coming. And there's also going to be a special review about The Little Sisters of Euloria because that one could really come, you know, after The Gunslinger like it did in the Marvel comic books and they adapted it in the Marvel comic books. That one could come directly after Wizard and Glass. It could come after The Wind Through the Keyhole. So you will also see that here in the month of May. And also make sure to like, share, subscribe, share this video with the hashtag The Road to the Dark Tower Movie and hail to Stephen King, you know, which is my show here on The Horror Show. And until my next entry here about The Dark Tower, I say do not forget the faces of your mothers and your fathers. I hope that we have been well met. And until the Wheel of Ka comes round once more, hasta luego, sin amigos. But I am hopeful it is sooner rather than later. And until then, stay scared and read The Dark Tower. Also listen to it on audiobook because The Wind Through the Keyhole is read by Stephen King and damn is it awesome to hear him actually reading his own stuff.